our GeForce, the second one this year from Germatech. My name is Anna Yukiko Bickenbach. I'm the event and program manager here at Germantech. And if you don't know Germantech yet well, what we like to do is we inspire, build and grow digital ecosystems for a sustainable future. And one way to do this is that we want to enable young and budding entrepreneurs to showcase their ideas and also get you know critical feedback that they need to propel their ideas forward and in order to do so we have our geforce event where you get to put your idea to the test for our mentor in this case dr mark Morgala. hello mark welcome <laughs> he's going to be the enforcer and give you guys uh, constructive criticism to your pitch. And um, we can start with welcoming Mark and saying hello, Mark. Mark is one of our dearest mentors from German Tech, longtime mentors. He's a serial entrepreneur and investor, an expert in finance and carries sustainability in his heart. And <laughs> Mark, maybe you'd like to add on to us, uh, onto that and tell us a little bit more about your uh, entrepreneurial history and your personal story. Yeah, so um, I'm in that uh, entire startup scene now for around 20 years. So I started uh, in 2000, straight after the bubble bust. So yeah, timing could be worse. Um, and uh, then I was around 10 years uh, on, the, on the investor side. So venture capital, private equity, was involved in a lot of early and late stage uh, financing, also invested in a lot of uh, venture and private equity funds. Um, and my last, uh, last job in, in that field was at AIG, in the, at the Sustainable Investment Group from American International Group. Um, but then, as you probably know, in 2008, we had uh, the second crisis, so the big financial crisis, and AIG was in the middle of that. So, so far, I thought uh, insurance is one of the safest business models in the world. But then AIG, the largest insurance company in the world at that time, was almost bankrupt. So, um, you know, so what we see with Wirecard uh, is uh, peanuts uh, compared to what we have experienced uh, in 2008. So in 2010, I lost my job and then I was thinking, what can I do? And I decided to switch sites and to co-found a company. Um, it was Sabitano, a kind of Facebook for TV. Um, we raised some good money and we built a product, but uh, at the end of the day, we haven't had any product market fit um for a lot of reasons but all our competitors were also not so successful so we made a lot of mistakes internally but even though um yeah all the others uh, also failed um finally i learned a lot of things about entrepreneurship the hard way so and i would not recommend that way but um it is like it is and since then um i'm working with a a lot of founders and helps them or supports them in building up the company, sharpen the strategy and get uh, the funding uh, on board. Um, so I always say it's a little bit maybe like uh, the, the role a coach in professional sports has. So I'm in my coaching zone and I just want to, to help you to, to play the game better. Great, and we'll put that to the test today as well. Yeah. <laughs> and now for everyone that has joined us, I would ask you all to just mute your microphones unless you guys are the ones speaking just so we can avoid any disturbances. And this is gonna be the format to, for today. We are gonna have four individuals pitching their ideas. They are gonna have three minutes to pitch. And when they get to one minute, I'm just gonna raise this wonderful clock just as a visual uh, that they have one minute left. I will also do the same for Mark. He has seven minutes to give feedback. And if we have time towards the end, we can also open up the discussion for anyone else participating to either ask a question to Mark. Um, so that's how we're gonna start. And we are gonna start with Simone. And Simone, are you ready? Do you have your mic on? I am on. Wonderful. On Simone, your three, three minutes start now. Hi there, I'm Simone. Uh, I want to build a web app that allows uh, graduates to uh, map their skills, um, to map their skills around, you know, according to the region 
and the uh, salary that they want to earn. So uh, getting into detail, a little detail is, uh, for example, if someone graduates in uh, computer science and wants to practice uh, Python programming language in a company, then uh, the, the graduate can uh, access the map and see uh, whereabouts or in which country or which city in Romania or in Germany can uh, 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 get hired in a company uh, where they need, where they hire people with uh, this skill. That's my, that's the idea I want to, to build. I would call it a, um, a career validator. Uh, this is uh, the first stage of the, uh, the, app, the web app and then I would like to uh, set up a second phase, a second stage of the uh, uh, web application. That is uh, something that allows career transitioners to find out the, my the milestones and their career path uh, according to how they want to uh, transition and career. Wonderful, Simone. And you actually Thank did you. that within like 90 seconds. So you have the benefit now. I'm just going to add Mark seven minutes to that. So you actually have a little bit more time with him. So the floor is yours, Mark. Yeah. Thanks, Simon. Uh, I really like uh, the term career validator. I think that uh, sums it up quite, quite well. How, how have you come up with that idea? I am a career transitioner and uh, I long needed a, a, a career validator or a, a counselor, uh, but I didn't find one that can uh, be very suitable to what I need. So now uh, I decided that if a person cannot uh, help me validate my career, then I only need a artificial intelligence or something like that, or some data structures that can enable me uh, to, to go through some stages of the career that I want to transition to and um, see where I am, basically map where I have come and where the milestones I have found. Yeah. What are the milestones okay. I have uh, reached and how far I am uh, to reaching my goal, my career goal. Yeah, yeah. Um, so two things are coming up my mind. So first, mm -hmm. I'm working with and also invested in in Univer. Maybe you know it's an app for students, um, and they they pivot several times, but they had uh, similar things in mind. I don't know exactly where they are now. So mm -hmm. it's an Italian team, but uh, um, also based here in Berlin. So half based in Berlin, half in Italy. Univer, okay. Univer, yeah. Um, so maybe you can have a look at, at, uh, at their app and if okay. you like, I can also always put you in contact, uh, with them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they tried or trying something, something. How do you spell up. uni W so or uni, okay. like uni, like university yeah. and where like, yeah, where, where do you want to go? Oh, okay. 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 I get it now. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't get the spelling. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second thing. Um, what you want to do is a kind of uh, platform and for that you need a critical mass. So you mm. need a critical mass of users and of course you need a critical mass of uh, kind of skills mapping. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so the obvious question is how do you plan to build up that critical mass? Well, okay. Um, what's your kind of first focus? So where do you want to start? Okay, so first of all, uh, as I said uh, before, it's going to be on a couple of phases. The first phase is going to be, uh, I need to build, uh, it's going to be something simple. I just want to make something simple to test, to validate, to see how that goes on. Uh, that is, I need to collect uh, data and have to see, I'm still figuring out how to do it. Uh, and then once I collect the data, then I'm just going to parse it on my Python equipment. And then uh, uh, I'm going to be using a lot of data structures and algorithms to find out. It's data science. It's a data science thing. So collect the data, uh, parse it on the Python, and then uh, I'll have to use some front end on Django. Uh, and because I'm self-taught, uh, self-taught, self yeah, self-taught Python programmer, uh, I'm going to have to, so teach myself to do the Django, the front end too. So it's going to work on a very simple thing in Python, 
with a Django front end, and then I'm gonna have to go on uh, JavaScript with views, I think, to, to make it even even bigger to reach the second phase. That is uh, the real career that, uh, validator. Yeah, but where do you want uh, to, to get the data from? Uh, well, I was, uh, first of all, uh, I wanted I wanted to scrape the data from the LinkedIn, but then I realized that it's not okay. It's not ethical to do that. So uh, I will have to look for data on different sources. It could be Eurostat. It could be, um, I haven't found yet the way to, to look for data in this sense, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be linked to education, to skills, to graduate. It's gonna be from Eurostat or uh, maybe the Statista, the Institute for Statistics in Deutschland. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe this. But, but certainly I want to take the data as uh, clean as I can. I mean, uh, as ethically as I can. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, I think it's probably one of the uh, key issues. Challenges. Mm -hmm. I yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. too. Yeah. And what is the area you're focusing on? Is it um, tech? Tech, huh? So, tech. but tech is quite broad, huh? Take it, uh, take as well. For example, uh, I would like to focus on um, people that transition either in uh, programming uh, or just you know, like in program programming languages. Let's say I don't, I don't know Ruby, Python, C plus plus, and of course I have to uh, set as a as a para, as a parameter. For example, the industry. For example, in my hometown, people use uh, C plus plus to create a board of their of the cars that they are doing. We have an very good auto industry in, uh, in, in my country. So, uh, and I have a friend that works in the auto industry, but he's doing, using a programming language is the, uh, the board, car board, I don't know how to say that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna, in my, in my hometown, it's gonna be like Python for uh, front end for the, I don't know, other systems in the car, in the auto industry. Mm -hmm. It could be auto, it could be depending on the, or even on the region, on what's the industry that they're going to work on. But at the end of the day, what is the difference to a, um, I don't know, specialized uh, job platform? Uh, I'm not, uh, people just uh, map, it's a mapping service. People, uh, pe so first of all, people map. Second of all, they validate the milestones uh, towards their, their goal they want to reach. I'm not uh, helping people to, uh, to to employ themselves in a company. I'm not uh, putting people in touch to companies. I only map where those uh, uh, regions or industry that they work. I think it's gonna be a very uh, good um, job focus because for example, uh, in the job market, it's not, uh, the job descriptions uh, may seem a little bit chaotic and the uh, jobs and they're not so focused. I need to help them uh, f uh, create, I need to help them uh, focus their search, their job search mm -hmm. through mapping. Okay, but how do you want to make money then? Uh, it's a good question. <laughs> uh, first of all, I thought it was going to be through uh, subscriptions. Uh, perhaps uh, other financing. Uh, I was also thinking that this is a post-pandemic um, matter. So I think I could I could take uh, I could work even with institutions, uh, with the local administration maybe, with uh, universities that can um, some universities or take a financing uh, like this. But I'm still thinking on ways to finance it. But first of all, it could be packages. Could be packages. I may uh, do. I may think of uh, creating some. Um, more specialized packages. Okay, okay. Yeah, subscriptions, various packages, uh, reports that if you want to read some more reports, you can uh, invest in the reports because it's good. Yeah. I think uh, it's a way to encourage uh, re uh, accurate reporting and um, to encourage uh, investment in your career, so yeah. Okay, okay. I'm still thinking yeah, always. Just keep in mind, you know, to make deals with universities or public administration is a nightmare, huh? Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm aware of this. Yeah. I'm yeah. aware of this. I would try to avoid. 
I'm still thinking. Uh, I'm still thinking. I was thinking to make a may, uh, maybe a marketplace, but I'm not sure what kind of marketplace I could implement. I'm not sure. I haven't got uh, yet an idea on what marketplace. People that want to post something, people that want to to do something, and then they can. Uh, or maybe people that have managed to get employed using our, just because they used our map, they can take a, we can take a little bit of a percentage of their wage. So for example, if someone has managed to, uh, <laughs> to get hired, it's because- um, Let me, uh, let me finish, uh, have you finish, your, finish your thought really quick, Simone, but we have to move on to the next okay. part. Sure. So maybe- Thank uh, you so much. I think the great part about this is you guys can always come back again after you have made some strides, then really showcase um, mm -hmm. you know, how input has been able to help you guys. So Simone, okay. thank you for the pitch. I also thought thank I you so great. much. Thank you for the second chance. Thank you. So we're going to move on now to Prosper. Great. Prosper, are you there? Let's see if your mic is on. Okay. So um, I would like to share my screen. Go ahead, share your screen. I, I haven't started the timer yet, so Prosper is going to share a few slides with us. And whenever you're ready, Prosper, let me know, and we will start uh, with the time. Okay, so I'm ready. Okay, let's see. I'm, we were waiting for the screen. There we go. I, I see short code, so Prosper, go ahead. Your three minutes start now. Okay, good afternoon, or should I say evening? I'm by name Prosper Kachi, and I'm re representing Shortcode, the student's offline way to learn. So um, we're currently targeting the e-learning market, which is predicted to hit $375 billion globally by 2026, and the current pandemic has hit more than 1 billion students. So our vision, is for schools, teachers, and students to never miss a class. And due to the current circumstances, our schools are being forced to close. And for the few that will open, they will only be allowed to they will only be allowed to host a certain percentage of their population, which is around 50%. So Shortco solves this by giving schools the ability to host virtual offline lessons or shall I say classes anywhere they are. So the problem itself is that I can't, like based on my location in Africa, so more than 49 million secondary school students currently suffer postponements of academic sessions due to the lack of access to learning content as schools are being closed and very few are opening with less than 50% capacity. So Shortcode is an offline mobile app that allows thousands of secondary school students the ability to continue learning, report to their teachers remotely from their mobile phones and do their assignments. So um, students are able to subscribe to the schools that they were formerly in. They can download the app and they can start learning directly through the product. So how it works is a teacher can create a lesson, then sends a lesson from the website. So the shortcode app will be able to receive that lesson in various formats in a compressed form. So the product itself allows students to be able to spend less than 100 megabytes per month, as opposed to 14 gigabytes that is normally spent on Zoom calls and the rest that schools usually use for their um, lessons. So um, we have a team of 11, but I can only put nine here. So we have worked with good companies like Venture Carding Group, Globant, and we are spanning more than four countries. So the market we're targeting in Africa is $1.8 billion in size by 2024. And our current target market is 100,000 students. So um, the partnerships we're looking at, uh, teacher associations, we have already used word of mouth and we have about 12 schools interested in paying for our product. So um, how we stack against competition is that we are cheaper. So we charge quarterly 
and we allow teachers and students to update their content and host their lessons without spending much data, while competitors will need to ship a new SD card for their offline content, and competitors also will need to use websites that do not compress data, so it's more costly for the students and the teachers. Okay, I'm really okay, so sorry. I'll, We're yeah. the, the three minutes are up, or, but I'm sure that Mark can ask questions in order to oh, fill okay. the rest of the gaps. So, Mark, why don't we just yeah. go ahead so we can make use of Mark's seven minutes? Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot uh, for for uh, for the pitch. Uh, very exciting um, because, of course, education is key um, everywhere in the world, and whatever makes education. Uh, better available, I think it's, uh, it's a great thing to do. Um, just as, uh, as before, I always like to know how, how, how you come up with that idea, you know, where, where it's coming from. Why have you decided to, to, um, to build a company like this? Okay, um, so this started a few years ago because I noticed that in our schools, I'm a university student, so I noticed that in our schools, they give us a lot of work, like, okay, go and get a, let's say a readout and print out for this and that, but they don't really give adequate sources of information. So what I was looking at is, can there be a platform that I can get everything on, on demand or it's already there, something like, some kind of Google but in an app form. And also, I also noticed that as the pandemic hits, schools started scrambling for their pockets and were firing teachers and students obviously were laid out at home so i was now looking at how can i incorporate such a problem which may stay with us for some time as everyone keeps saying covid is here to stay so yeah that's all that's what i had in mind mm -hmm. okay and um, do you develop your own software or do you need a uh, kind of existing software? Because I'm not an expert in that market, but I guess there are already um, a lot of e-learning softwares around, right? Yeah, that's actually true. But the problem is that if we were to use existing LMS systems, we we'll would have to reconfigure it. And that may take a lot of time because most of their platforms were designed to do the same thing online. And ours is designed to send everything, like the website is like a storage, while the app itself just fetches from the website. So anytime the student wants something, they open their app and it collects it from the website which the teacher has put it in. So we had to develop our own software. Okay, okay. And what's the status of your development? Do you have already a kind of working prototype? Yeah, so we're currently in that stage because we were supposed to have customers paying on our platform last month, but we got billed on as a web developer left. So um, we predict, according to the progress, I, I spoke to one of our web developers today. So according to the progress, we predict by the beginning of June, around third, fifth, we should have something on board so we can start onboarding teachers and students and testing out our product. Mm -hmm. And do you also have a kind of first school or university you, will, uh, you want to work with? Yeah, we do. There are about 12, though I didn't really specify on their names as I didn't ask. I just, do you own this school? How many, I mean, how many students per class and stuff like that, but yes, we, we do get our contacts from our teachers, as we have teachers also in our startup. And what's your feedback so far you have got from them? Are they looking so, for that or is it, uh, is it hard to, to convince them? So there, there have been a lot of iterations. So from the start, what we thought was we we're going to do streaming. So what we discovered, because I usually buy weekly, talk to teachers. So what we discovered is that they want to earn money because most teachers now are losing their jobs and schools also want to cut costs on teaching their leftover students. That's the ones that are not able to attend classes with the others. They also want to be able to teach them effectively without spending data. So that's where we come in. So yeah. we're serving two markets. 
Okay, and what was your business model again? Who is uh, who are you charging? The school or the students? Okay, so there are two, but we start with one. The first one is schools. So schools pay two dollars per student quarterly. Yep. That's not much, huh? Yes, but we can break even within four to eight months as it due to our currency, actually. So, yeah. Okay, and what do you think? What are your biggest challenges on the way? Because it all sounds quite straightforward. Huh? Yeah, so though everything I feel, it's practice and iteration, but the biggest challenge is speed because we, we have people that are interested, but most people would not really jump on it without having a product on board. So that has been the problem, having the ability to scale website development to fit our needs fast enough because we just have app developers, but they are not really doing anything because they are waiting for someone to do the website. So it's more, more speed actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how do you want to, to overcome that? Okay, so well, we're looking for partnerships even from um, GeForce, but I don't know. But what we're looking at is to get partnerships, people that can help us to be able to fast forward our web development. I don't really feel one person can be fast enough because as and we do that, we can also compensate by um, revenue sharing uh, or equity. So that was yeah. what I had in mind. Yeah. Yeah, that was actually my, my, my that, that's what I also had in, uh, in mind, uh, that you just give uh, the developers some shares. Huh? Yeah. If you cannot pay them uh, in cash, you can pay them in shares. Yeah. So, why don't you do it? Yeah, I noticed that it's not all that really flow through. Like, I've talked to a lot of developers. If they don't really believe in what you're doing, they won't buy it. Some may just say, pay us up front. And having a team of 11 people, I don't really know how I as a student to be able to do that. So it's more of who buys into the vision because it's, it's really weird because you have people that want to pay you, but you have not yet completed a platform that will allow them to pay you if you get on I mean. Yeah, yeah. No, you need, of course, people who really believe in, in your vision and huh, your story. Um, and not just a developer. So you have to, to commit yeah. them with your, with your vision. Um, yeah. Yeah, but that's, uh, that's your challenge. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, that's a challenge of uh, founding a company. Um, what's your background? Okay. Um, so I'm a civil engineering student, but I've not graduated. I'm yeah. in my third year. Okay. okay, Prosper, thank you so much. And uh, I, I actually really enjoyed that you put us in for the partnership. And if anyone has some tips for Prosper in terms of how he can accelerate or network with uh, app developers so he can get going, uh, feel free to just write him directly. And Prosper, we can always stay in touch so we can see how we can help you out with our network. That's why we're here. And so now we're going to- Awesome. Move so just just one last comment go for it huh it's a great great thing to do so um yeah just just go for it Wonderful. awesome okay so now we got george pitching and george are you ready do you have your mic on can you hear me yes we can hear you Perfect. i just share my screen yes we'll wait sec. share your screen were you actually tuning in from george uh, I'm from Greece. Wonderful. We're very international today. All right. <laughs> Lovely. We can see your screen. And let us know when you're ready and we'll start the three minutes. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. We are Ebnoisis from an IoT startup from Greece. And we bring value to the construction and rental companies around the world and in their tools. So what is the problem that uh, the construction sector is facing? There is a tremendous loss of equipment above 1 billion per year and most of the existing tools lack a universal tracking system regarding their management. Also, the maintenance, uh, the maintenance uh, checks are human oriented and most, most of the times are really uh, time not, not time efficient. 
So what we have for us? What do we have for us? Uh, an attachable cube that communicates vital information about the machinery through an easy to use app. So we Ace have developed this this cube that can be attached on any kind of uh, construction equipment machinery. You can observe uh, critical information about it and react to that. The device has its GPS. It uses also tremor data and temperature data. It uh, measures the activity of the tool that for any impacts from any falls. And we're using narrowband IoT for transmitting the data, a new variant of 4G and 5G technology. Uh, the, kind, the main characteristics of our device is that is durable. It can so in order to uh, to not interrupt uh, the work in the field, uh, the battery autonomy is up to six months, and also the easy to use is we we have established a plug and play philosophy in our uh, installations in order to have as much customers as we can. So what the company uh, earns from us, uh, you can track your assets from anywhere. Uh, this, there is a simple fleet management as our basic service. And uh, then we want to develop a predictive maintenance features for our premier customers. Our market is uh, on the global side. We have started from Europe and the Middle East. And uh, you can see that the market is on the billions. Our main focus is uh, the European market uh, as we have started. And also we have some connections in, du in the Dubai area. Uh, our pricing model is that we have a standard version for uh, around 10, 10, $10 per month per device. And also we want to include a premium version for uh, 18 months, $18 per month per device, which will include the predicted maintenance. So regarding our competition, we have two main competitors, existing power tool companies that have internal solutions, which are very uh, lower technology than us and also much uh, more expensive. And also there are telematics companies that offer much more expensive solutions than us. Uh, we began from Hilti IT competition back 2017. We won several competitions from then. We got our first funding from the EIT Digital Venture Program. And now we are uh, in the moment that we start having our first revenues and from down payments from, uh, from our customers. Uh, and this is our team, me, George, another George and Lefteris all have worked for Hilti in uh, internships and we know the uh, the sector for not so many years, but we have a sufficient uh, place for that. Perfect three minute pitch. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and give you your seven minute feedback to a very nice prop tech solution. Give me a second. Oh, Mark, do you have your microphone on? Yeah. So yeah. sorry, sorry. Um, what kind of tools are you addressing? Uh, uh, we're mostly this, this have screwdriver or is it, you know, a big, heavy, whatever kind of construction uh, tool? Uh, we're mostly targeting on uh, heavy machinery like bulldozers, GCBs, excavators, uh, things like that. And also uh, they have called us from rental companies for generators, airlifts, generally oh, equipment that worth over $500. Yeah. And there is really an issue to to install a rather you know complex uh, complex thing on it with temperature and all that stuff. Do the do the customers really need this? Uh, well, the customer doesn't need it at the first time, but the companies that build the tools and the machinery need it. So, in the second phase, we want to create a second revenue stream for selling data uh, to to manufacturing companies. Yeah, but then you're selling a solution to customers mm -hmm. which they do not really need with all the feature sets. Not yet. Yeah, so, but uh, maybe the, the producer needs it. Huh? Uh, well, some of, the, some of our customers need some data about their tools, especially the rental ones. Uh, the rental company wants to categorize their customers regarding the heavy use of the equipment in order to charge more or less. Yeah. Sure. So uh, does this, uh, this feature doesn't apply to all of our customers. Yeah, okay. But and Hilti is renting a lot of stuff, right? Sorry, couldn't hear you. Hilti, Hilti is renting out a lot of uh, their tools, right? Yes. 
Yeah, okay. Now they could be a customer, I mean, probably. Uh, you said ET or something. Hilti, Hilti. No, Hilti is a, the ah, Hilti, company yeah. you are working for. Now they could be a customer. Um, they could be a potential exit. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> so when they when they should buy or acquire you, they should be uh, probably uh, be a customer before. I, I don't think that would be a customer because they use their own R and D for uh, getting to the same point with us in some years. Mm -hmm. So, but why should they then acquire you? Because they were rich faster. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And you know, you 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 said you started already in 2017, and now we have 2020. It seems it took you quite a long time to to develop your product. And uh, now in 2017, we just we were just a student project. Uh, the company and the business model started to be created in September 2018, after the EIT Venture Digital Program. Yeah. Okay. We started and the development of the product. Yeah. And what is actually your focus? So what is your, your kind of first, first customer group, first type of tools, first geography? Well, uh, we have started from Greece. We have already uh, pilot, pilots here, which yeah. the first one is with a medium construction company, which mostly was used for breakers and generators and some kind of other equipment that I don't know in, in English. Yep. And also um, another rental company here again in Greece, which used it for generators and airlifts. And yeah, we also have a, a, f a future collaboration with the Cyprus, mar uh, the Cyprus market that want only the tracking system. Mm -hmm. Could you please go back to the all the features you have on that slide? That yeah. one? Yeah. So right. what are the main pain points of your customers? Uh, the main pain point for, uh, for, our cost for some of our customers is that they don't know where the tools are. For example, we have uh, our first pilot was conducted because uh, a breaker was lost. The company has 25 active uh, sites and they couldn't find the breaker to continue the to continue some of the work done there. Yeah. So they want to to manage their fleets because they have like 60 or 60 or 80 tools that they want to move around those sites. Mm -hmm. But if it's mainly about location, do you need all these other features? I, all the other features were added because uh, first of all, some of other customers, especially the rentals, want to know the use of the tools mm -hmm. and some large large contractors want to monitor the performance of their subcontractors. Yeah, but are you currently addressing these customers? Uh, we're, we're targeting those customers through white label solutions. Like uh, we sell it white label to another company uh, larger than us and they sold it to larger contractors. Mm -hmm. And does it work? Uh, from this, uh, that's where our first revenues. Okay, okay. Now, I don't know, I, I of course do not know so much about your business, but at least my impression is that I, I miss, I miss a focus uh, in a way, you know, focus on a certain customer group and uh, focus on a, on one, one application. So, when you when you describe your business, you are switching between different use cases, different customer groups, and so on. Um, so it's a little bit irritating. Maybe it's not the case, but at least when you are talking, maybe to investors and to get funding, mm -hmm. um, they will most likely come back to you and say, "Yeah, it's a lack of focus." I see. So you suggest to target on, on a niche market and, uh, and focus on that. Yeah, you know, whenever I give workshops, uh, one of my favorite slides is think big mm -hmm. but in small steps. All right. Oh, so you have, to, of course, to, to build a big business and to convince investors, you have to think big and to, you have to show a big vision. Mm 
-hmm. But you, when you just stay there, then you're a dreamer. So you have to combine it with a clear roadmap, step by step by step, how do you want to realize that vision? And you have to start very small, huh? as, as small as you can. I see. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, thank you. Very exciting. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Mark, for the feedback. And I'll correct that. That's uh, construction tech. Maybe one day also, also part of prop tech. Um, yeah. Thank you, George. And we're going to move on to Juan. Turning in from Peru, I hope you're able to tune in. Juan, are you there? I know he had some technical difficulties before. And I, Juan, your microphone is off. So if you're actually talking, maybe you have to put turn your microphone on because I do see that you are here. And let's see, Juan is our last pitch. There you go, we hear you. Yes, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello, Juan. Hello, how are you doing? Wonderful. Are you going to be sharing a presentation with us as well, or is you going to do just a vocal pitch? No, please. I would like to share the presentation if it's possible. Yes, then go ahead and do that. And when you're ready, we will do the three minutes. Uh, do you have, do you, have you uploaded that presentation? Or? No, we don't have. Ah, looks like uh, we have it right here. Perfect. Thank you so much. Hi. You just let Tabia know when she needs to go to the next slide. And we're going to start with your three minutes now. That's okay. That's okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Mark Mugal. And thank you to the GT team. Right. Thanks a lot to all of you. Peru COVID-19 crisis, an introduction to non-profit radio health service using WhatsApp. Uh, my name is Juan Carlos. I'm from Lima, Peru, from, from Servicio de Principal Desarrollo. A radio digital um, agency, and this is a project we already have submitted to the uh, office of the president of Peru. We find that this. Uh, I'm sorry. So, I need to move to the following uh, presentation. We can skip the. How how do I? Sorry, I have Are some. Next slide. She's just. Yes. I think yes. she just let her know next. Just say next. Yeah, we can just skip this this uh, quotations. Yes, please. The following one. Let's skip this quotation. This is. I guess this will be available for this is the institution we have in Peru, the Research Principal Desarrollo. Okay, we can skip it. Uh, also, we can skip this uh, quotation. I think we can read it. Okay, this is this proposal. The following proposal has been submitted to the offices of the President of Peru. Uh, we are expecting an answer in the following days. It's called Radio Post America, which is a Radio Medical Post. In Peru, um, the first line of uh, medical service uh, for the population are called uh, Post Americas, which are some, in some sort of um, small uh, medical units that provide basic uh, medical support. And that's the origin of, of the concept of Radio Post America. The idea is to provide medical service through radio, uh, radio service, in this specific case, as we do in our uh, radio service we provide using WhatsApp, okay? So let's give some background information about uh, the following one, please. Um, during the crisis, let, let's, let's uh, okay, that's better, that's much better, okay? How many have tested positive to COVID-19 until yesterday? More than 2,061, more than 261,000 people until yesterday, no? How many hospital beds do we have in the country? We have 49,482, which means that correlation between people who are sick or have been sick and the number of beds hospital are quite uh, uneven. And that means that at the same time, uh, the, state ha the state and the private uh, sector have problems to cope with the uh, hospital needs of the population regarding COVID-19. So before entering to our conceptual map, let's give two, two additional information. The following one, please. About the, 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 the first, how many, how many people inhabitants in Peru? 3.9 million people are the, the, the inhabitants of Peru. How many mobile phones we are, 
are there in Peru? 3.9. So there is a, a practically an equal correlation between the number of inhabitants and the number of phone, mobile phones. And from that, 3.9 million um, mobile phones, 90% are smartphones. So which uh, means that we can use technology uh, which are already in the market. Okay. This is a non-profit project. It's not a profit project. It's not being developed for for profit. It's being developed for uh, helping the COVID crisis. The following one, please. Let's go to the, the user map or the conceptual map directly. That'd be great. Okay. Very good, very good. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot, okay? So the concept we are trying to develop, it's based on what we have already been doing um, in radio communication for uh, uh, science and, and technology. We have a radio which is called Radio Science and Technology. And from that experience, we have developed this uh, additional concept, which is a radio based in providing medical service for the population affected by a, a population that is being um, um, either patients or even relatives who have people with COVID-19. No? First, we have an internet radio content provider, which is an internal unit, an internal unit within the, 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 the whole, the overall system, which provides content for each WhatsApp channel. Okay, so each, watch, each WhatsApp channel is a radio channel, an autonomous radio channel, okay? So, which you find in the bottom part of the, the, the diagram, okay? But uh, at the same time, uh, we have a central uh, unit, which is a WhatsApp radio, which operates at the same time with like a, a WhatsApp uh, contact center. And each, uh, each specific demand by the population which cannot be attended by the state and is not being attended by the private sector, by private clinic, clinics, clinics, and, uh, and it's only attended by the, uh, the public sector, the, the one who is in facing the crisis of COVID-19. This idea is to provide specialized services uh, using different uh, WhatsApp channels. The first one is an emergency uh, channel. The second one is a hypothetical uh, channel, it can be adapted to the circumstance, the, the changing circumstance of, of the pandemic in Peru, which is one channel, one WhatsApp channel for the elder people which have with a COVID-19. The third WhatsApp channel will be for children who are affected with, which is a small population, but it's a, a special vulnerable population, a small population in terms of COVID-19, but it's a special vulnerable population who requires a specialized services that also can be can be can receive support uh, um, by uh, this WhatsApp channel. The third one, the fourth one, is the pharmacy channel. This is my, my surprise you, but we have a problem in Peru with right now in the middle of the crisis, which is has to do with the, the medicines uh, available for people who are sick with this uh, uh, during this pandemic. No, medicines are not available for the population. Um, these are, um, I mean. Well, uh, this I think the because through, due to the graphic, I think we can understand what the other channels are about. I just want to make sure we get enough time in with Mark. So Ooh. because Mark can give you, because I think Mark, did you understand the gist of what Juan is doing? Or we, I think we should no, use this not, time for you to ask questions. Yeah, I'm afraid not, not really. So what, what are these WhatsApp channels doing? So what do I get there exactly? So uh, let's, let's, yeah. maybe, let's maybe take the emergency channel. Okay, okay. The emergency channel will be the channel. It's not working right now. We start working like around two months ago, and unfortunately, the the volunteer team that was working with us, for reasons I would not like to disclose, decided to withdraw the project. I mean, so that interrupt the project in the middle of the crisis, and we have been unable to be to help during this uh, crisis. But anyway, the WhatsApp channel emerging will, will channelize the needs of the population. I don't know if you are aware, but uh, this COVID crisis hits specifically and in a very cruel way the poor population of the country, the ones who cannot pay a private hospital, the ones who cannot pay a, an ambulance, the ones who will not pay. A funeral service, the ones who will not pay a, a private doctor, and those are the ones who require the uh, the most with most uh, urgency uh, support. For example, uh, we are we just we are still in Corfu in Peru, 
uh, between 10 o'clock until I think four o'clock in the morning. I'm not sure right now what's the schedule, but anyway, people who might need a uh, medical support during the night, how do they manage to do in the case of a, a curfew, like the one we have in Lima? No, it's really difficult and tough to do this kind of problem with COVID patients in the middle, in the middle of a curfew. curfew. So in this case, uh, the emergency channel will be the possibility to get in touch by WhatsApp with somebody who can provide medical assistance for the for the the person who is, is sick in that moment, in that moment, who might be in, in danger even, even in that moment. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, yeah. Th I don't know if that clear clarifies your, your question, Doctor. Uh, no, not, I'm sorry. No, not not really yet. So. Mm -hmm. Maybe let's assume I'm, I don't know, I'm a family in Peru um, in a little village. Um, and then, I don't know, my daughter gets, uh, gets sick. So how can I then use your, your WhatsApp radio? Thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Muga. Uh, right. Uh, first, the, the project is focused on Lima. It's not in the whole country. The focus should be focused on Lima because it's, the country is big. Okay. Take Lima. Take Lima. In Lima. Okay. The second, um, the person who will, the, the, the person who requires the help, it can analyze, it channelize its, its, its needs by the radio, WhatsApp radio, which is 24 hours, the seven days of the year, uh, working working as a radio and you just only need to know the number of the, of the phone the phone numbers of the whatsapp center and this is going to be not a, only a, not only a, an individual initiative from our institution but this should be a collective institution from the a collective answer by the society by with the support of several uh, prominent institutions in the country that can give um, a prominence to this idea I make it uh, knowledgeable to the population that this channel is available for uh, emergency, for elder people, for children, for pharmacy needs, or for OGN, which is another uh, urgent need that population uh, has during this crisis. No, for another list that we can mention later. I don't know if that clarifies more the idea, please. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> um... well well, maybe I think the attention is really good, but maybe Mark, you want to give um, Juan some tips on the actual presentation. So when he's presenting this in country, maybe it's a communication that needs to be more de defined at this moment. Yeah. I'm sorry, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get the idea. Yeah, I, I think you have to, to, to explain it uh, simpler on a clearer rate. Still, for me, I have maybe, I have an idea of what you plan to do, but it's still kind of, uh, um, yeah, uh, not, not really clear. So, um, Okay. I still don't know what, you know, what, how these kind of WhatsApp radio work, you know, so, and therefore I, I you know, so there is a family in Lima. Well, mm -hmm. And now I have a, a health issue. Mm -hmm. And I know about your offering. Mm -hmm. so how can I use your offering and what kind of help do I get there? Okay. First, I would like to, to answer with a quote from Eric Brice from the Lean Startup, who says, a startup is a human institution designed to create new products and services under conditions of extreme uncertainty. Extreme uncertainty. I would like to underline this because this is the conditions we are working in Peru. So this is a project which is uh, clear in its current phase and should start getting more clear as, as it starts to develop in its implementation phase. This is just only a, 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 a precondition of what I want to say. Well, um, an emergency, okay, for example, let's say, for example, a, an emergency could be oxygen. This is a problem right now we are facing in Peru. There is not enough oxygen in the country for the, the amount of population who requires oxygen. Besides the oxygen that is available, it has increased to, a, to its, its price to a, a, a condition which is unacceptable for now. 
crisis we are living and also which is uh, an affordable for the population. So how to cope with this specific problem of oxygen requires a WhatsApp channel for the population who are sick and who in, in many cases in, in danger require oxygen in the country. For this population, specifically in Lima, Lima because the pilot project was started in Lima, uh, the, for this population we will have a channel, which is channel WhatsApp 5, which will be uh, focused on, uh, on providing oxygen and informing the, those who sign up to the, the, to the WhatsApp channel 5, information concerning where to find cheap oxygen, because nevertheless there are some people who are enough honest in the middle of this crisis, crisis to, to sell the oxygen to a price which is reasonable for poor population. So people who carry information in this channel five about oxygen available for today, at the price of today it's found in the market, and they will they will and all products related with oxygen, oximeters and all other products related with oxygen. I don't know if it's more clear now the idea. Yeah, no, no. So so when I need oxygen, I can go on your platform and I know where I get it. Yeah, it's not a platform. It's a it's a, a, a WhatsApp. A, a channel. So we, I'm using the already was what WhatsApp provides. As I mentioned, I, 90 percent of the population in Peru, not in Lima, because I, I guess in Lima, 98 or 99 percent of the population use uh, smartphones, and therefore they yeah, use yeah, WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but uh, you have a solution which gives me the information where I can get oxygen. Excuse me, I couldn't hear the uh, question. No, you have a solution. I I can use your solution to get to know where I get oxygen in case I need it. Yes, it's a referral service. It's not a commercial service. I'm not selling the oxygen. I'm yes. referring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't said you sell it. I, I, I just said I get to know where to get it. Right, where to get it. I mean, that's enough information to save a life. Good, Do you think good, 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 good. Now, now finally okay. I understand, yeah. But I, I unfortunately do have to interrupt. I know that this is something that is very pertinent to what's happening around the world. And that's why you want to, I didn't want to interrupt, but this is what I'd like to do because um, it you know, appears that Juan is working on a communication tool that would help uh, the processes to become faster, uh, at least in Lima. So mm -hmm. I think what we can take from this, at least also from my perspective, sorry, Mark, to just kind yeah. of but, but in there is, that the presentation style in terms of how you're communicating the solution, um, especially in the format of GeForce where you want to get input as to maybe, you know, the que big questions would be how could you scale it? Well, what, el what else do you need to do? What might you have to consider based on, um, you know, how you're going to spread this, et cetera. Maybe uh, what I'd like to offer is that the next time we do a GeForce one that you can come back in terms of, um, maybe how far you've gotten with, you know, a presentation where people can also help you give the right input in order for you to be able to set more and put, get more impact going. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Is that okay? Sorry, Mark, that I had to. <laughs> no, no, no worries. No worries. All fine. All fine. Thanks, Professor. <laughs> Because we have to stick to our time. Unfortunately, our time is over. And um, I wanted to, it would have been nice if we could have kind of cross spread, asked questions uh, to other people um, within our group. If Is there anyone in here that would like to pitch a one minute idea to see what Mark thinks about it um, while we're at it? So I don't see because we wanted to also take advantage of having Mark with us. Uh, so what I would say, Juan, uh, just for the last part, just uh, if it looks like we have your presentation. Why don't you go ahead and write us what kind of outcome you wanted to have, what your big questions were um, in terms of your, your offering. We can see if we can answer in another way or if Mark can uh, send you an email back with some of his critical questions that he could add. Um, but for now, I would like to say thank you to everyone that participated from around the world. And thank you, Mark, for your time to give very uh, important feedback to all four of our startup pitchers and idea givers. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Pleasure.
Thank you so much. And we wish the rest of you guys lots of success and that you enjoy the rest of the evening or rest of the day, wherever you are. And make sure you stay in tune with our newsletter for all our other GeForce and World Changes in Tech event format. So we hope you guys enjoyed this and we'll talk to you again soon. And Juan, make sure you write us an email, okay? So we'll try to help you uh, as well as we can. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Thank you. Right. Mm -hmm. That's it.